Yes. So what is an overlay journal? Well, an overlay journal is a community-based journal that doesn't host its own content. Instead, it points um, through a link to a manuscript on a preprint server. So overlay journals don't typeset or copy edit, and authors generally format their own articles. They provide um, peer review and a stamp of quality in the same way that a traditional journal does. So how do they work? Well, um, an author submits a manuscript or deposits a manuscript to a preprint server. And then the author approaches um, an overlay journal just in the same way they would approach a normal journal. But instead of uploading um, a manuscript to, an article, to a um, submission system, they just point the link to where the article is deposited on the preprint server. So a completely traditional peer review takes place and the article is either accepted or rejected. Um, if it's accepted, then the overlay journal can assign a DOI, um, give it a cited reference, and again, the only difference is that that accepted version will stay on the preprint server. Um, and there's also one other service that I just wanted to um, discuss, which isn't quite an overlay journal, but it nearly is, and this is the peer community in evolution. Um, so this has a really interesting model um, where it peer reviews um, preprints and publishes a recommendation, but it doesn't actually publish the um, preprint itself. So this is also shown on the slide, it's the kind of blue um, image, this is their twit pic. Um, so you can kind of find that and see how they, they write their comments there. So, um, so one of the questions is what's led to the proliferation of these kind of new ways of communicating research and it's kind of, it's, you know, preprints have happened um, and in the physical sciences, you know, everybody publishes on, our, on the archive for the reasons Stuart's already mentioned, speed and to get this kind of pre-publication review. Um, and I just want to give you a quote um, from the Open Journal website. This is an astrophysics um, and cosmology um, overlay journal. It says, we don't need journals to disseminate our research anymore. We all post our research to the archive. We only need journals for peer review and the prestige that comes along with that. And I think that that quote captures it quite neatly. In a community that already has kind of a, what you might term publishing infrastructure, it's got a platform, it's got the archive, and it's really happy with this kind of archivesque kind of no frills approach to um, publishing. Um, you know, it's kind of argued by them that actually there's no point in kind of reproducing um, this kind of process and having kind of um, doubling up on infrastructure. So there's a bit of experimentation with kind of publishing models and, and a tiny bit of reappropriation, I think, of the publication process by academics too. Um, but the authors in these fields, they actually do only need um, the validation and prestige that's required for the current institutional reward system. And overlay journals kind of um, are a really low cost, kind of neat way for them to do that. So what are the impacts for traditional journals? Um, well, discrete analysis is um, hoping to get an impact factor and um, according to its website is being tracked by Web of Science. So when that receives um, an impact factor, then that's kind of the start of um, properly competitive overlay journals. Um, but these are grassroots movements and, um, you know, the point is that they're kind of no cost or low cost. Um, so there isn't a business model. So, you know, as publishers, we're not all going to go out tomorrow and launch a bunch of overlay journals. There's no revenue um, yet. And so they'll likely remain community-based academic ventures. And, um, you know, they're probably only going to succeed as well in disciplines where a kind of no-frills approach to publishing is acceptable. So. Um, I think that the, um, the real threat to publishers could come if preprint servers start offering the services that our platforms now have. I think then there's a risk of disruption to, to kind of our um, traditional platform-based journal publishing. If overlay journals have impact factors and can provide the same services um, and they're free and very low cost, then I think that that, that does pose um, a threat. Um, you know, we could say that you know, the preprint server becomes the publisher and the journals are just there to assign a stamp of quality and what's the business model in that. So I think you know, the, the, well, the investment um, by Chan Zuckerberg um, in BioArchive will be very interesting to follow. So to summarise, I think we're probably going to see more overlay journals, um, probably um, moving from physics into the life sciences, but I don't think they're necessarily a threat at this point in time. Um, I think there's a real opportunity to provide filtering services to the preprint literature, um, and that could be by the communities themselves, societies, publishers, or other third parties. And um, just to wrap up, I just think as publishers, you know, we need to be really mindful that there seems to be a kind of whole new environment kind of evolving like naturally further up the research chain to where we're kind of used to being, and so just that we need to keep a watchful eye on this area and make sure that we evolve with it too. Thank you. Thank you.